Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over a problem involving torque, and this is a situation we have. We have these five forces, one, two, three, four, five. They are all acting on this purple or pink object, whatever color that is, and that is a door. You're looking at the door from the top. These are the handles of the door. This is the hinge for the door, the axis of rotation. This blue arrow represents the radial vector, and it's the distance along the radial vector is what we call the lever arm we are going to calculate the individual torques from each of these five forces and then of course we'll sum them up and we'll get the net or the total torque acting on or the total torque resulting from those five forces okay this is the equation we're going to use this is tau the symbol for torque then we to calculate the torque we use this equation it's the force times the lever arm times the sine of theta theta being the angle between the radial vector and the force vector, all right? And this is how we do that. The torque from force number one, force number one is 40 newtons, and we're going to use this equation. So we're simply going to multiply 40 newtons times the lever arm, which is zero meters. You will notice this force is applied right at the axis of rotation. It's not any distance away from the axis of rotation. So if it's applied right at the axis of rotation, then the lever arm is zero times the sine of 90, then 90 is the angle between the radial vector and the force vector, but of course this is zero and any number times zero is zero and it should make sense. When you apply a force right at the axis of rotation, it's not going to produce any rotation and it's not going to produce any torque. Okay, so that should make sense that that is zero. Now I want to point out that here I wrote the units because we're multiplying a force times a distance, we have the Newton meter. This is the units for torque. The units for torque are either the newton meter or you can write the meter newton. You'll see it written both ways. This is not work and this is not a joule. Okay, The units for work is the joule, which we often say is the newton meter, but it's not. It's a different unit because this is torque and the units are either the newton meter or the meter newton, depending on which way you want to write it. Okay, number two. Force number two is 50 newtons. It's applied this distance away, 0.2, so the lever arm is 0.2. So we just multiply the force times the distance times the sine of the angle. The angle, again, is 90 degrees, and we get that the torque produced by force number two is 10 newton meter. Now, I put a positive sign here because forces that cause objects to rotate in the clock, excuse me, in the counterclockwise direction are, by definition, they produce a positive torque. So I put a positive sign here. Now torque is a vector. This is the magnitude. This is the direction of the torque vector. The torque vector is always perpendicular to the radial vector and the force vector. And in this case, when it's a positive torque, causes objects to rotate in the counterclockwise direction. The direction of the torque vector is out of the board or your page or your computer screen. Number three, the torque due to force number three. Force number three is 60 newtons. The lever arm is 0.6. We simply calculate 60 newtons times 0.6 times the sine of the angle. Again, this is 90 degrees. And we get that that force produces a torque that has a magnitude of 36 newton meter. This force would cause this object to rotate in the clockwise direction. Forces that cause objects in, uh, to rotate in the clockwise direction produce what we call negative torque. So this is negative. You have to make sure you have your negative sign here. And when the object rotates in the clockwise direction, the direction of the torque vector is into the board or into the page or your computer screen. So it's important that we have our positive and our negatives, and we know the direction of the torque vector is either into or out of the board. Okay, now for number four, you will notice that Force number four is not at 90 degrees, but it's at 120 degrees. And this angle theta is the angle between the radial vector or the extension of the radial vector and the force. So it's this angle. It's not this angle. It's this angle, and this angle is 120 degrees. So we simply multiply the force times the distance times the sine of the angle between the radial vector and the force, and we get that the torque produced by that force is 23 newton meter for magnitude again counterclockwise so positive and therefore again the torque vector points out of the board okay so now I want to point out that when we multiply 
the force times the sine of the angle between the force and the radial vector, we're actually finding the component of the force that is perpendicular to the board. Then that would be represented by that arrow. Okay, this force has a length, this vector in theory has a force, has a length of 30 newtons. When we multiply 30 times the sine of 120, we get about 17.4. So 17.4 newtons of this 30 newton force are acting perpendicular to the door and that's what produces the torque it's the component of the force that is perpendicular to the door all right now the last one force number five you'll notice pushes right in along the door parallel to the radial vector pointing at directly at the axis of rotation now we're simply going to use the same process we're going to multiply the force times the lever arm times the sine of the angle between this radial vector and this force vector. Now these two vectors are parallel to each other. They point in opposite directions and therefore the sine of the angle between them is 180 degrees. The sine of 180 is zero and therefore that force, force number five, 15 newtons, produces a torque of zero, produces no torque and will not cause that object to rotate and it should make sense intuitively if you push along a door or even pull along the door like that that force would not cause that object to rotate and therefore produces no rotation and no torque all right so therefore there you see we can went over all five of those counted the calculated the individual torques and now we can just add them all up zero plus plus ten plus minus 36 plus plus 23 plus zero and you get the net torque the sum of all those torques is minus three newton meter it has a magnitude of three newton meter it's minus that means that all of these forces would cause when they're applied would cause this door to rotate in the clockwise direction and therefore the direction of the torque vector would be into your computer screen or the board or the page whatever you're working on okay so there you go i think that was pretty straightforward we went through each of those all five of them did the same thing for each one the force times the lever arm times the sine of the angle and we got the individual torques we summed them up got the total torque the net torque and i think that's pretty straightforward so thank you very much for watching i hope you found that helpful if you found that helpful, please do the following three things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. That would be very nice. And also, leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And we will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.